an incredibly brief whirlwind tour for, through SAMHSA. And I'm going to try and summarize everything that I know about the essence of SAMHSA into a few minutes here. And I have basically SAMHSA in two slides. And lots of people are surprised when I say I can do this. Um, but so let's see what you think. So here we go. The most important thing about SAMHSA is the domain. And this is something that most people Domain is, is one of those things like security that's super overloaded. And a lot of people in security think domains are like the CISSP domain. So you got endpoint protection, you got, you know, engineering and architecture and, and those sorts of things. And if you really understand SAMHSA's domains, then yes, technically, especially with the extended definition and exp well, expanded, I don't want to confuse it with extended domains, the official uh, extended domain, which I don't actually think really exists. It's just kind of a, but anyway, different conversation for a different day. Um, so anyway, the point is, if you really understand what domains are, then you can say, yes, in fact, those are domains, because in fact, if you look at it the right way, it follows the rules. But that version of domains isn't really as useful for us, because that's in the context of our world, that's not in terms of understanding our customer's world, and that's where we need to be. So a domain is the center of the universe as far as we're concerned, because everything we do either, well, everything we do is inside a domain, and it involves generally at least two, um, but as you'll see, there's always three. So uh, we start with the domains, and a domain has elements. So a domain in its SAMHSA official definition is a group of elements subject to a common security policy. Now, I took that and kind of looked at it because I like to draw boxes because I come from the background of software development and solution architecture and application architecture and enterprise architecture and all these other things where, you know, boxes on whiteboards is the way you go. And you draw lots of boxes. And so I started, well, okay, domains are boxes draw a lot of boxes, why are we drawing boxes? And it's not just because they're subject to a common security policy, because that's the end, that's not the why. Again, we go back into this thing where we're looking at for synthesis, which is looking, standing in it and looking out. What, what is the purpose? Why are we doing this? What is the role of this thing that we are dealing with in the larger system of which it's a part versus going down? Now, in foundation, we spend a lot of time going down the SAMHSA is about the elements, it's about the outcome, so we got policies associated with the domains, we decompose these things into, you know, however many dimensions we need, and on, 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 on. But that is half of the architecture equation, remember, because the architecture equation actually spans the, the breadth between the common understanding of architecture and engineering. So we're always somewhere on that spectrum. Sometimes we're more on the outside looking in, sorry, it was on this side, the outside looking in, and, or the inside looking down, and sometimes we're on the inside looking out, trying to figure out what the function of what it is we're doing actually is. So when I was really kind of doing some deep thought and introspection about SAMHSA and kind of twigged and questioned, because one of the practices of the Agile security system is to challenge your assumptions. And I learned this not through security, but through actually the work of Peter Senge, and uh, Joseph Jaworski in a book called Synchronicity, which is how I found Senge and how I found systems way back in 2004 or something like this. Um, and of course, it's a common theme that's reinforced in psychology and human behavior. And you, know, you, you really need to constantly question the things that you take for granted because they may not be as true as you think they were because you accept a lot of stuff. We have to. It's, it's how we have to function because if we had to micro think about every decision we made, we'd be dead. We wouldn't accomplish anything. But it's useful, especially when it matters and especially when we're trying to work for somebody else, to kind of question what it is that we're doing and challenge all of the assumptions that we think or apply or even surface them and recognize that our assumptions are going to be different than somebody else's. So we need to be able to not only challenge them, but we need to be able to suspend them because if we don't suspend them, then we can't actually listen to anything and truly hear what anybody else is saying because we're constantly judging it, we're constantly looking at it through our world, and we have to try and see it through their world. So we have to kind of put our baggage on the shelf and really be present and focused. And this is what um, uh, the listening practice of the system is about as well. So elements. 
So elements are in a domain, not because they're subject to a common security policy, but because they have a certain set of common characteristics that then expose them to a common set of risks, which this need to be managed thanks to a common security policy. So we go again, three steps backwards to figure out the why, and then we've got something that unlocks a whole new world of architecture and gives us a lot more power than anybody would have normally imagined, and even I imagined when I was teaching foundation, was really there. And this is kind of the basis of what we're doing. So we've got elements, we need to identify those elements, we figure out what makes those elements unique, and we know that we can group those elements, we can slice them, dice them, look at them in any direction, in any dimension, based on which set of characteristics we think are most important. And this is also a really important factor of domains too. So a domain has an owner and somebody has the accountability for whatever those elements are and whatever those elements are supposed to do. Again, this is core systems theory, it's just masked because we don't talk about it in foundation and most people don't even understand it really. I mean, we talk about systems all the time, but we don't actually really talk about it from a true understanding of systems theory and the idea that a system is a collection of parts that work together and it's more than the sum of their parts because all of the parts are interdependent and there's always a path between two parts and doing something over here has some kind of impact on the system. And so somebody, you never take an element in isolation. If it's in isolation, who cares? It's interesting. It may be interesting to take apart, to gain knowledge, but again, it's not useful. It's only useful when it provides some purpose to somebody else as part of a larger system. So the only person who has any idea of what that purpose is supposed to be is the owner of the domain. Now, they may not know, but they are at least accountable for putting those things to some kind of use, and they can delegate it in according to everything we teach you in foundation and all this stuff. Um, but they have an owner, and that owner has goals and objectives. So they have their own little sort of personal mission and purpose that they're trying to accomplish. And those elements in that domain, in whatever capacity, are a part of delivering that mission and purpose. But note that the elements are most of the time not the mission and purpose. They are a means to an end to achieve those goals. And this is important because this means that if we keep this in mind, we can never get lost in looking at our navel and focused on security for security's sake because it's not about the elements, it's about what those elements do. And again, coming back to systems theory, it's about the function of the essential part in terms of the system of the larger system of which it is a part. So this is how we stay business driven. And those goals and objectives are important because those goals and objectives then define what characteristics need to be delivered and manifest and measured and validated about those elements to make sure that the owner has confidence that their goals and objectives are going to be met. So we abstract those through requirements engineering, just like we did in foundation, and we get a bunch of attributes. Now, one of the other things that came out of the work that I did is, um, again, looking at all of it really with a fine tooth comb and taking it apart and spinning it around and doing a lot of analysis and then a lot of synthesis, thinking about what the purpose of it all was. Um, I identified what I call the essential eight attributes that must be present every time you draw a box. Now, this is really liberating and powerful because it means that you don't have to use them, but if you really want to understand what the definition of security is, it's going to be fundamentally in terms of those eight attributes. So they may not be the ones that the user cares about or the owner cares about the most, but they're always there. And anything they do care about can't be delivered unless these eight are actually present. So again, you've got this sort of multi-layered attribute hierarchy type thing, but it's not a tree, it's a graph, um, and lots of other stuff that are wrapped into this. But so domain has attributes, and then a domain has controls. So those elements have to deliver those attributes in that box for the purpose of delivering that owner's objectives and goals. And so the way we give them confidence is we deploy controls to protect or enable those attributes in that domain. And those controls are gonna be specific to that domain. They may be the same ones we put somewhere else, 
but when we talk about a domain at a time, we've got controls that are specific for those domains for exactly the reason that they exist, those elements are there in the first place, which is to enable the owner to achieve their goals and objectives. So that's kind of two of the three core concepts of SAMHSA right there. And then these work together in terms of, so we got goals and objectives with the link between the goals and objectives and the stakeholders. Got goals and objectives with links to attributes. Got goals and objectives with a link to domains. And then we've got controls that link to all of those. And so we've got our forwards and backwards traceability, which is great. All good. And then we take that and we say, okay, so that was my SAMHSA in two slides. Now let's go into the rest of it. So then we've got our layers. We've got a layered architect model. Why do we need layers? Because the world changes at different rates depending on what level of granularity you're working on. The mission and purpose of a large organization, multinational organization that's been around forever, is probably not going to fundamentally change. It may achieve those mission and purpose objectives by going into new businesses, completely dismantling old businesses, doing different things to achieve that mission and purpose and deliver it, but the mission and purpose probably aren't going to stick, aren't going to change that often. So they can, but rarely. So that's why you have the slowest moving stuff at the top and the fastest moving stuff at the bottom. Because as the environment changes, you need to adapt or you need to die. I mean, that's pretty much the only option. Um, so the lower on the architecture layers you go, the more likely it is to change. And this is also important from an architecture documentation point of view, because the lower in the documentation, I mean, the lower in the, the layers we go, the less we're likely to actually own the things that we're talking about documenting, which means we don't want to, we don't want to do somebody else's job. We don't want to duplicate their stuff. And yet, if you look at most security architecture documentation, you got a lot of documentation about the lowest layers of the architecture, and most of that stuff is going to change next week, which is why everybody bitches about the architecture being out of date all the time. Nobody wants to read it, and it's 500 pages of documentation everybody has to redo every month, and people end up being architecture secretaries instead of actual architects because we're focused on the wrong layers of the model. So if we focus at the right layers of the model, we still have to pay attention that they're all there. Then what I did was I looked at it and said, okay, what is in each of these layers? And this is where the domain template worksheets of the architecture wall come from. So we know that there's in SAMHSA canon, there's logical and physical domains and they go various levels down in the layer hierarchy. Physical ones obviously go into physical mechanisms and components. Um, but the logical ones go part way down, but everybody has the operational elements because you can specify what the operational elements are at any layer of the architecture. Um, and this is kind of where the fold over matrix and the service management matrix or operational matrix or whatever it's called this week, because um, they keep changing the name, but the, the bottom part and the overlay. Um, so we need, if we're going to track this stuff, and we're going to focus our architecture efforts in the right way, we need to understand what's most important. What are the essential parts of each of those layers? Because those layers are part of a system, if you look at it this way, because they have a function to perform, which is how do I construct a solution that is going to evolve and adapt over time in the most um, simple, easy, predictable way possible? That's kind of the function so that's kind of the mission and purpose of the layers of the architecture framework that SAMHSA defines. So you've got the architecture layers. We've mapped those things to the different aspects of the domain templates. And then you've got the life cycle. So again, you've got chapter uh, six and seven or seven and eight, I forget, um, of the blue book that gives you kind of a process decomposition. I did the, you know, multi hundred page documentation for the decomposition of the six activities of the life cycle. But if you want a high level overview, and you guys all have this because either you were already signed up for my daily emails before, or you definitely got it as part of the challenge uh, because it's one of the things that you got in the kit on the welcome pack on the phone. But what are the things, the, the essential things that happen at each of the layers 
for each of the activities. And this kind of helps focus the conversation as well, because if you look, then you're going to start to see where you are and are, maybe are not doing the right things. And this is all leading into what we're going to talk about today, because if you look at where we spend most of our time with traditional security architecture, and again, why the traditional definitions get in our way and prevent us from doing the kind of architecture we want, we spend it in this orange box. We spend it kind of at the, you know, all or part of the physical and component layer and the operations layer. That's it. Um, and that's way, 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 way down in the weeds. And what can you do down in the weeds other than start sneezing and, you know, get watery eyes and start crying and overwhelmed and feel lost. And, you know, I'm never going to get out of here because all I can see is all these weeds in front of me. That's why the guy is standing on the top of the tower looking down, being an architect. You can't be an architect in the bottom of the weeds. You can be an engineer. You can make sure as an architect that the stuff you're supposed to prioritize that are the essential characteristics and constraints that you've defined for the system that you're trying to deliver are there and validated. But from there, you can't see anything. So we need to be somewhere else. And where we need to be is actually in the blue box, because that's where the real architecture happens between the contextual and the conceptual layer of the model. All the logical model does is provide more detail and commentary on what the conceptual model is. And here again, this is something that if you don't have a software be development background and you've not done solution architecture and you've not done application architecture, you might miss if you're coming at SAMHSA because you don't really see, especially from the way it's explained several times in foundation, it's kind of like, well, it's sort of duplicated and I don't really see the point. And, but the logical and the whole point of separation between strategy and design in SAMHSA is that you can define the majority of your architecture and security for everything you're doing, whether it's big across the entire organization or whether it's, you know, building this mouse or the phone or whatever. One project, one problem, doesn't matter. It's all the same. But you define the conceptual model because the conceptual model is your design. The conceptual model and the way you put that together from a security architecture, that is your security architecture. The rest is commentary and details. I mean, this is why I say the majority of SAMHSA, I mean, it, it's phenomenal what it's there, but you, it's easy to get lost because, in fact, the majority of it is all commentary about what to do with domains, attributes, and the governance model. If you don't understand that it's all about domains, attributes, and the governance model, you're looking at each of these things as an independent part that you got to optimize, that you got to document, that you got to figure out how to linked together. Oh yeah, there's two-way traceability, but that's just the layers, the way most people understand it. They don't understand it as n-dimensional, as a graph that's really complicated, which is why violently encapsulate complexity is one of the things we got to do as part of the Agile security system. And remember, so we got to do it in the right place. 